All right, what's up coach? Welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I have right here on my screen, I have a document. I wanna share this with you. All you gotta do is go right below this video and it's gonna walk through my five step sequence on how to close clients. This has been used literally by thousands of coaches already that I've already gotten to work with. And I wanna share it with you here because I know this is gonna really, really help you. And if you watch this video all the way and you want more help, all you gotta do is go below this video, see my phone number there, reach out to me. I would love to help you grow and scale your sports training business. So we're gonna get straight into this. I'm gonna show you my five step system on how to make sure clients are committed before they ever see you in person, all right? So let's dig into it. So the first thing, and this is so, so important, we have to make sure that you set the frame of the call. Now, what does this mean? Well, if you get to a phone call with someone and they are distracted, they are busy, you can hear a bunch of noise in the background, the chances of like having a good quality conversation with them is it's just very, very small. It's not good. And so we got to make sure we do a little bit of, of grunt work before we get onto the call with them. So this comes down to your messaging, how you are communicating with them before they have the call. Is the call scheduled? Are you just calling them out of the blue? Like these are really, really important things. So when we get to the call though, it needs to be framed in a way where you, the business owner, you are in control of the call, all right? And it needs to be set to where you are in a controlled environment. If you've watched my YouTube videos in the past, you've heard me talk about this. You have to be in a good headspace to have a sales conversation. If your mind is distracted, if you have things going on around you, that's not gonna be good. And it's also a terrible first impression for the future customer when they know that you're not ready to talk, all right? So that's number one, gotta set the frame. You have to be in a good controlled environment. And this way, when you start the call, the first impression is professional, okay? And this is just how it is in this industry, all right? I'm gonna be very blunt. Most coaches out there that are competing against you, they don't have a professional business. So if a parent speaks with you today and they also go talk to two other coaches today, whoever's the most professional is gonna win that customer. So you can choose to be professional or be like everyone else. And I'll tell you right now, the people in this industry that make six or seven figures per year, they're all really professional, right? They know what they're saying. There's no, there's no weird, like back and forth with parents. It's all structured, it's all simple. And the parents know that these business owners are in control and that's how you should be, okay? Now that's number one, okay? Number two, you need to ask simple yet detailed questions. And this is very important. Oftentimes coaches feel like they have to talk about their playing history, their coaching history. Like you don't need, that doesn't sell your program. What sells your program is you making sure that this customer, this future customer is actually a good fit to work with you. And the way that you do that is you do that by getting parents to open up to you on that call about what their child is struggling with and the solution is your program, all right? Let that sink in. You're not having to tell them where you played in college or if you played in college or what your background is. No one cares about that. They only care if you can help. And the only way if you can understand if you can help someone is by asking the right questions on the initial call, all right? This is why you are the interviewer, all right? You are asking questions. You are not talking a lot. You are letting them speak. You're letting them open up about what's going on, what they need help with, what they're looking to get out of the program, et cetera, all right? That is very, very important. You are interviewing them. It's not the other way around, okay? Next, this is the third thing. All right, you have to really be detailed when you say certain things, all right? So I'm gonna give you an example. When you talk about your program, you can say things like, yes, in order to be accepted, we only allow players to join our program if they're committed to at least fill in the blank, three months, six months, 12 months, whatever you want that to be. And you can, you can say stuff like that 
because it's gonna hold your program to a high standard before they ever meet you. And they already know that if they're gonna do this, it's gonna be a commitment. This is not some like loose training program where they can just come train whenever they want. And that's really important because they are used to that method from other coaches. They don't, they're, they're not used to this newer type of method where they have to lock in, they have to be committed. And you gotta think about it too. The only way kids are gonna get results in your program is if their parents are committed. It's a package deal. They got to be committed and you can set the tone and say things like that on the actual call. All right. So that's a really good thing to start doing on your calls if you haven't done that yet. And you should be saying those things before you even talk about the price. This way they know, OK, if this is something we're going to do. This isn't some short term try it out type of program where we can come whenever we want. No, this is a legit program and it's going to be a three month minimum or a six month minimum or a 12 month minimum, wh whatever you want to go with, that's what you need to say when you go through that part of the call. All right. So at this point, you've set the uh, frame. Okay. You have asked detailed questions. You've talked about the minimum requirement in order to actually work with you as far as months committed. Okay. Uh, next. And let me pull this up here because my computer just froze. Okay. So you need to then explain, okay, what's the next step for them? Most coaches that we work with, they do an eval session. That could be a free eval session. And I'm going to show you five different ways to get people on this, on this video. I'm going to show you five different ways to get people to commit to the eval. Um, but you got to be able to take the conversation you're on and start pointing them towards the eval session, getting them to register for that because that needs to be your first point of contact after this call to see, okay, is what the parent's saying, like, does that line up exactly with, with how their kid is? Because you gotta remember, if you're gonna get someone to commit for three months, and especially if you're in a group training program, you don't want some really annoying kid to join your program just straight off the bat without seeing them train. And you're also, you're also gonna have more data, more information on how to better help this player when they come to an eval because you're going to be able to see them train in, a, in an environment where they're, they haven't already fully committed yet, right? Because again, if they fully commit, you haven't seen them play, you don't, you don't know really much about the kid other than the questions that you asked on the call. That's not good enough. We want them to come to an eval, make sure that they are a good fit for you and you are a good fit for them. This way, when the, they join your program, it's very easy to sell because they've already experienced it. All right, whether that's a free eval or a paid eval. All right, so when you talk about your eval session, that's when you should then shift towards, okay, if you guys end up joining our program, this is what it looks like. Can I share more about how our program is set up, Ms. Jones? They'll say yes. And then you can go into your sales pitch of, this is what it looks like after the eval, boom, boom, boom. We can talk about this more in depth after the eval session if we are a good fit. So this way you're setting them up for, all right, after the eval, we're gonna have another call and that's where you do the enrollment call, all right? So the last thing that we do on this call is we have them enroll for the eval session, okay? And I'm gonna show you, I have it on my screen here. I have five different ways on how to do this. And again, you can get this below, just click on the document, it's yours, right? Just click file, make a copy and you can edit it. You can do whatever you want to it, all right? But here's five ways to do this. So the first is selling the eval as a standalone price, meaning the session is not free. It is a standalone fee that they pay. And then if they pay that, that's its own thing. And then if they join your program, that's its own thing. So a lot of coaches that I work with, when they do it this way, they do it to where like the eval is $50 or $100. And that's the entry point. And if the parent is on the call, on the initial call, the coach will send the parent a link to sign up for that. So this way, it's very simple. They just go pay and they've already agreed over the phone. Yes, we want to do Thursday at 4 p.m. So that's already locked in. They have the link. So once the call's done, they pay the $100 or the $50 or whatever it is, and they join the eval sessions. So they've paid for it. So that's the first way. All right. Now, the second way, I personally like this way and the next way a little bit better than just the standalone price. So this is set up to where the eval session is normally $100. 
if you sign up today, it's $50. So this gives them more urgency to sign up because if they don't have urgency, most people get distracted right when they get off the call with you. And we don't want people to get distracted, right? You're busy, they're busy. You want them to go get things done and you want your clients to be decisive because when they're decisive, there's no back and forth between you and them ever. All right, and that's what you want. You want people to take action now. And that's why I like this option uh, because you're giving them a discount if they sign up today, all right? Now, the next way, uh, we have this set up to where it's normally a certain price, it's free if they sign up today. So again, this could be uh, the eval session, normally $50, if you sign up today, it's free. So this is them basically committing that they're gonna be coming this week this day, this time type of thing. And if they skip that session, if they miss it, then they're gonna have to go pay the normal price, all right? So that's the third way, all right? The fourth way, I've done this one, I really like this one too. Um, and this is, the eval session is $100. If you guys choose to move forward after the eval session into our actual program, then that $100 is used as a credit towards any package that we sell. So this is like a down payment that they're giving you. So the $100 is used for the eval, but it's also going to be credited back to them if they move forward in your program. So let me show you this example. So let's say they pay $100 and you sell a $2,000 program. So if they decide to buy the $2,000 program after the eval, it's not 2K, it's 1,900, right? Because we're using that 100 from the eval and we're applying it to the 2K. So 2K minus 100, right? Very simple, I like that one. Um, the last one, it's like the most easygoing way of doing it. It's just the eval session is free. How's Thursday or Friday at 4 p.m. this week? They'll tell you, like this is a, a, a easygoing way of doing it. And here's the thing, you might have to test some of these out to see what's gonna be the best for you. If people are not coming to your free eval, there's a reason, maybe there's, there's not urgency, maybe they're not serious, maybe you haven't sent them the link to sign up, like maybe there's no follow-up after, the, after that call. Like there's so many little details to this that make a huge difference in getting people to the eval and actually getting those people to sign up, all right? So those are five different ways to get people to commit to the eval, all right? Now the most important thing that I wanna tell you on this video is it's not gonna matter to me if they're paying for the eval or if it's free. What needs to happen is on the call, you need confirmation from the parent that they have the payment link or they have the confirmation email of the time that they just selected for the free session. You cannot leave that call where it's like, all right, I'm gonna send you an email in, in 30 minutes or I'm gonna send you an email later today with the payment link. Don't do that because odds are they're not gonna sign up because they don't have it right now, all right? And I don't like just trusting people to go do something later down the road because like, they haven't committed anything yet. So I wanna make sure by the time the call is done, they have verbally told me, all right, yes, I have the email. Yes, I have this. So this way when we get off the call, my job is done. It's up to them to go finish it, all right? I hope that makes sense. I know that's really clear and it's very specific, but these are the details. When you really wanna grow your business, these have to be very, very sharp. And the sharper you are with this, the easier it is to get clients to take action and grow this business. Because I don't care if you get a million uh, free evals every single month from, from prospects that wanna join your program. If they aren't committing to your program, if they're not showing up to the eval, it doesn't matter, All right. So hopefully this video helps. I, I hope you take the five-step system that I gave you about you know how to get people to commit and then how what I just showed you there um, how to get people to show up to the eval, whether it's paid or if it's free. So hopefully this helps guys. Go right below here, see my phone number. That is how you can get in touch with me directly. I respond to every single coach that ever gets in contact with me. I've been doing that ever since 2015. So make sure if you need to chat with me, go right below here, send me a text. Can't wait to chat with you. Have a blessed day.